Coming around again is the story of one of America's most popular singers, a woman who has had her share of troubles over the years, but always seems to come back stronger than ever. Her name is Carly Simon, and her recent talk with Rita Braver is our Sunday Profile. For over 30 years, Carly Simon has put her heart and soul into her music. She's done it again. Carly Simon has written a series of very personal songs, songs very much like her. Her new CD is called The Bedroom Tapes, recorded in Simon's studio that was once her daughter's bedroom on Martha's Vineyard. It also seems like a fitting name because there's such a level of intimacy in the songs. Well, they were, they were a group of songs that I didn't expect to actually come out as a record. And so I just thought, I'm going to write what is in my heart. I'm going to write what I'm going through. I'm going to write what's in my brain. I'm going to write what's you know, in my foot. Great day in February. Some flecks of white, but mostly brown. A live Carly Simon performance is a rare happening. When she sang for me recently, I knew how lucky I was. She doesn't like to perform in public and to stop trying to figure out exactly why. I've done so many different kinds of therapies to try to figure out what it is, so therefore I can cure it. But I never have been able to. The reason I don't think it's stage fright is because sometimes it happens in Bloomingdale's. <laughs> sometimes it happens, you know, on the beach. It's sort of akin to an anxiety attack. And you can have anxiety attacks when you're anywhere. It doesn't mean you have to have one on stage. She grew up a child of privilege. Her father was one of the founders of the publishing giant, Simon & Schuster. He loved Bach and Beethoven. Her mother favored Broadway show tunes. Carly loved it all, folk, jazz, rock and roll. I thought, well, if I ever had the noise, I'd be a singer. But I was always shy. As a young child, you'd had a stammer? Yes. How did you go from being a stammerer to being a singer? Well, stammerers know that you don't, that you don't stammer when you sing. And so my mother was, was greatly helpful. And so when, whenever I would be trying to say something that I couldn't say, she would just say in a very nice and diplomatic way, just, just sing it, sweetheart. But in doing it, I learned how I could sing past the butter in all different kinds of rhythms. There was past the butter, past the butter, pat, 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 past the butter. I know that sounds like a stammer, but it's a controlled stammer. And past the butter. It worked. Soon she was singing whenever, wherever she could. It's a silver and gold that we sit winking and blinking and nod. With her sister Lucy, she formed the Simon Sisters. My father sits at night with no lights on. But eventually, Carly Simon found her own voice in her writing. Anticipation. Singing her songs, she became a one-woman hit factory. Songs like You're So Vain became American classics. Everybody thinks your so vain is about Mick Jagger. Oh, they don't really. Yes, they do. Okay. Is it? Oh, no, no. And no. then I read it might be Warren Beatty. Oh, y you know, don't listen to what other people tell you. Well, do you want to solve that mystery here for us? You no, know, I could never solve it because if I solved it, then no one would have anything to talk to me about. Simon's first marriage was to another high-profile singer-songwriter. James Taylor. The very famous marriage ended in an equally famous divorce. You have to know that even after all this time, people 
are still interested in you and James Taylor. I am not allowed to talk about it. By James. Uh, every time I talk about this uh, subject, I get a lot of grief from James, who doesn't really like to acknowledge that he has a past. The years our love will grow. Simon and Taylor will always share their two children, Ben and Sally, both heading into the family business. Because I'm so devoted to you. Performing with them must be an amazing experience. For you. Yeah, that of course to me is how I think of myself as the mother to Sally and Ben. They are remarkable. I love them so much. And there's almost nothing else to say. It's a mother's intuition to make a little space. It's a quiet mission to tidy up her place. Again, Simon's experience is woven into music. Her song about a mother's love is slated for a new Disney movie. She's already hit it big in films, with coming around again from heartburn. Let the river run. Let and let the river run for Working Girl. That won her an Oscar. That was pretty exciting. I must admit to, to a real high there. And I kept on not being able to figure out whether my antidepressant had just kicked in or whether it was the Oscar because I had just started taking antidepressants for the first time about two weeks before that. So I never knew. Do you still take antidepressants? Not all the time. I have a chemical strangeness in there that either goes in the direction of anxiety or depression. But um, I'm much more stable when I am, although I go off them every, every once in a while to prove to myself that I really am still crazy. Crazy? Maybe. But definitely courageous. Several years ago, she developed breast cancer. After chemotherapy and a mastectomy, she is healthy now and strong enough to acknowledge the depth of her pain. It's after the knives and the sutures and needles, I'm left with an arrow that points at my heart. One of the most intense songs on the bedroom tape CD is a song called Scar. It's a metaphor for, for the big wounds that we suffer during a lifetime and, and sort of coming to terms with still loving yourself. One of the great strengths in her life in good times and bad is Jim Hart, a writer and magazine publisher to whom she's been married for 13 years. My husband actually says to me, he says, you know, it's easy to love you for the things that are obviously good about you. But he said, I love you. I love you for your struggle. Hart was also there when she went through a bout of writer's block. Nothing was good enough. Nothing that I, that I wrote had any um, resonance or uh, it was just boring. It sounded hackneyed. It sounded trite. It sounded like been there, done that. And... I remember when I was in a bar in Woods Hole waiting for a ferry to come to take me back to Martha's Vineyard. Um, and I heard Embraceable You on the jukebox, the Gershwin song Embraceable You. And I started thinking about George Gershwin. I wondered whether he'd ever been through such a situation, such a writer's block. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable. And somehow that song and thinking about Gershwin struggling made me go back, it made me decide to decide to go back to my piano and write and whatever came, I would be more tolerant of. The songs did come. Carly Simon heard the music again. And so do we. I will catch the train, catch another breath, move back to the piano and let the notes do what